Welcome to the Black Mass. Our story tonight was written nearly a century before psychotherapy was invented. If it had been the other way round, our hero might have suffered a little more, and we a little less. Here is Eric Bowersfeld and Bernard Mays as the madman, and Pat Franklin as the women in The Diary of a Madman by Nikolai Gogol. October the 3rd. An extraordinary thing happened today. Uh, first of all, I got up rather late. Uh, here, here are your boots, sir. Ah, Martha. Uh, what time is it? Just ten o'clock, sir. Ten o'clock? Impossible. I heard a clock strike ten hours ago, hours ago. Yes, sir. Just ten, sir. Oh, I must say. I'd as soon have skipped the office altogether, altogether. That chief of my division. Oh, the way he but treats Tell me, my good man, oh. why is it you're always in such a muddle? Oh. You dart around like a hen on a hot griddle and get to work in such a mess the oh. devil himself couldn't straighten it out. It's just like you to start a new heading with a small letter. Oh. Look at that. No. Give no date, no reference no. number. Oh, you're muddle-headed. Muddle-headed. Oh. This is old Crane. And I know what it is, too. He envies me. He envies me. He envies me because I sit in the director's office and sharpen his quill. Oh, if it weren't for the prestige, I really would have left that department long ago. Well, it was pouring. So I wore my old overcoat and took an umbrella and hurried along the avenue. Stop, my boy. Look, there at the carriage. Just stopped in front of the store. Don't you recognize it? It's the director? Yes. Well, how can he possibly meet here? It must be his daughter. Ah, his daughter. Oh, quick, against the wall. Yes. Oh, look at her fluttering out of the carriage like a bird, like a bird. Oh, God, I'm lost. Lost. Quick, hide. Why? She recognizes your, your coat. What about my coat? Oh, it's stained and out of style. Quick, in this doorway. Oh, never mind. She's gone into the store. Oh, why did she come out in this pouring rain? I tried to deny after this that women have a passion for buying clothes. She left her lapdog in the street. She's called Maggie. Yes. Maggie. Then another dog joined her. It was following two, um, ladies. Uh, well, the two dogs hadn't been together for more than one moment when... Hello, Maggie. Uh, Hello, Fidel. Well, I'll be damned. Talking. Shame on you, Maggie. You haven't written in weeks. Oh, I've been sick, Fidel. What the devil is going on? Dogs can't talk. So sorry to hear that, Maggie. Well, drop a line soon. I, I've got to run. Uh. Dogs can talk, they can talk. Oh, it's not so unusual. The world has seen similar occurrences. In England, a fish broke surface and uttered a couple of words. Well, I've never heard of a dog that could write. Oh, of course, not only gentlemen can write. Correctly, anyway. Ah, it was all very surprising. 
that I must confess. Cribbling shopkeeper. Lately, I have been hearing things and seeing things that no one else does. But that's no sort of writing. Anyhow, I followed the women and their dog through the rain. No compass, no period. I recognized the house they entered. Terrible spelling. They went up to the fifth floor. Well, good. I wouldn't go in now. I'd make a note of the place and wait for the first up. October 4th. Today is Wednesday, and that's why I was at our director's home, in his study. I came in early and sharpened all the quills. Ah, our director must be a very brilliant man. His study is crammed with bookcases, such erudition all over the place. What importance shines in his eyes. Quick, what? The door. Huh? The director, stand up, have the documents ready. No, 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 no. No, it's... Ah, oh, oh, like a swan. And when she looks at me, it's like the sun. Hasn't Papa been in here? Oh, what a voice. A canary, an absolute canary. Hasn't Papa been in here? Oh, ma'am, don't have me put to death. But if you do decide that I must die, let it be by your own aristocratic little hand. Hasn't Papa been in here? No, ma'am. Oh, well, thank you. Oh. At home that night, I lay on my bed most of the time. Then I copied an excellent poem. Without you, one hour crept. Slowly, like a year, like a year. Is my life worthwhile? I wept. When you're not here. Hmm. Yeah, sounds like Pushkin. Sounds like I put on my overcoat and walked over to the director's house. And waited by the gate for quite a while to see whether she wouldn't come out and get into her carriage. But she didn't. November 6th. I don't know what's wrong with the chief of my division. Well, for instance, yes, for instance, please, please, when I arrived at the I office today. Agree. Now mm. then, what I want to know is what's the matter with you? Oh, what do you mean? Nothing's the matter with no, me? No, come now, try to understand. Aren't you over 40? Yes. Yes, well, isn't it time for you to wise up a little? Oh. Everybody knows what you're up to. Yes. Everybody knows you're trying to make the director's make daughter. The... You. Oh. Ha! Just look at yourself. Look, look, what are you? Nothing, oh. absolutely nothing. You haven't a penny to your name. Look in the uh, mirror. Look at yourself. Yeah. You haven't a chance in the world. Stop, stop. What do you know? What do you know? Oh, I can see through you. You're jealous. Jealous? Jealous? jealous. jealous. <laughs> and then uh, you begin to notice the way the director has been favoring me lately. Oh. <laughs> and who are you anyway? A divisional chief. So what? Uh, I could be promoted to... I'm only 42, an age when one's career is just beginning. Yes. I'll go higher than you yet. I'll go higher than you yet. And God willing, very, very, very much higher. I'll have a social position beyond your dreams. You think you're the only one in the world to have dignity? Uh, give me a coat. Give me a coat and tie like yours, and you would be uh, worthy to polish my boots, not my boots. And what, my good man, will you use for money? <sighs> yes. My lack of me. That's the only trouble. That's the only trouble. November 8th. Uh, went to the theater. Uh, th th there was a vaudeville show full of amusing things, amusing things, uh, um, uh, making fun of everybody, even lawyers. It's so outspoken, I wondered how it got past the censor. Uh, it said plainly that merchants swindle everybody and that we all need protection from the newspaper men. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, playwrights write very amusing things nowadays. Ah, <sighs> I love going to the theater. As soon as I get a few cents, I can't help myself. <sighs> oh, one actress sang really well. Uh, what did it remind me of? Yes. Yeah. Who? <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, what a rogue I am. <laughs> oh, never mind, never mind. <laughs> November 9th. Today I sat in the director's study and sharpened 23 equils. Ah, how brilliant he must be. How I'd like to have a closer look at these people, see how they live, all their subtle innuendos and courtly jokes. 
Sometimes the door is open and I can see into their drawing room. Oh, you should see how it's decorated. Mirrors, mirrors, mirrors. Fine pieces of porcelain. <laughs> how I'd like to see into her room. Oh, her boudoir. All those little jars and bottles standing there amidst the sort of flowers one doesn't dare breathe on. There's the dress she's thrown off, looking like air. Her bedroom. Ah, miracles, miracles. To see the little stool upon which her delicate foot descends when she emerges from bed. And see how an incredibly fine, immaculate stocking is pulled up a leg. Oh, 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 oh. oh then that stupid lapdog came into the room. Oh, oh Matchy, Matchy, well, 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 little Matchy. Listen, listen, Matchy, Matchy, we, we, we're alone now. We're alone now, and I'll, I'll even lock the door so that no one will see us. Matchy, Matchy, tell me everything you know about your mistress. What she like, what she like and everything. I, I swear I won't repeat a thing, not a thing. Oh, but the silly little mutt ran off as if she didn't understand what I was saying. She knew, she knew. And dogs can talk. Most of the time, they just choose not to. Because they're stubborn, they're stubborn. Well, anyway, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to that house and find Fidel. And get my hands on those letters that she's been writing to her. Yes, that's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do. November 12th. At 2 p.m., I went out determined to find Fidel and question her. I found the house. I found the house and, and went upstairs. Yes? Uh, excuse me. Uh, do you have a dog by the name of Fidel? Yes. Why? I want to have a talk with her. What? I said I want to have a talk with your dog. What? Uh, the girl was stupid. I could see from the start how stupid she was. <coughs> oh, there's the mutt. There's the mutt. <coughs> now then. Get out. Get out. Leave her alone. <coughs> Oh, you repulsive little creature. Bite me, will you? Ah, ah, there's your basket. There's your basket. Just what I'm looking for. Ah, underneath. Ah, underneath in the straw. What do I find? What do I find? Ah, the letters, the letters. I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. Ah, ah the letters, the letters, the letters. Ah. You're mad. You're mad. Get out before I call the police. Get out. Ah, now at last, now at last, I'll find everything out. All about these intrigues and plots. Oh, plots, plots. I'll find out all the little wheels and springs at the bottom of the matter. These letters, these letters. They will explain everything, everything. Oh, dogs are a clever race. They know all about intrigues. Everything is bound to be in the letters. But it was too dark when I got home. I can't read too well by candlelight. <sighs> so I lay on my bed and waited until morning. Hmm. November 13th. Uh, let's see now, let's see now. This, this letter here looks quite legible. Uh, there is something canine about the handwriting. Um, dear Fidel. Dear Fidel, I'm very glad we have decided to write to each mm. other. Spelling is very good, very good. It's even punctuated correctly. <laughs> this is considerably better than our divisional chief can do, though he claims to have gone to some university or other. <laughs> well, let's see further on. I believe that sharing feelings and impressions with another is one of the main blessings mm. in life. Mm, the thought is stolen from a work translated from the German. <laughs> The author's name escapes me now. I speak from experience. My young mistress, whom her papa calls Sophie, Sophie. is crazy about oh, me. Oh, oh, Sophie. <laughs> well, never mind, never mind. Papa often pets me, too. I drink tea and coffee with cream. Oh, I must tell you, my dear, that I am not in the least tempted by the bones Fido chews on in the kitchen. I only like the bones of game. And even then, only if the marrow hasn't been sucked out by someone else. Now, uh, what's this? What's this all about? What rubbish? What rubbish? As though there weren't more interesting things to write about. Uh, let's see the next page. Uh, there may be something less stupid here. Now I'll tell you with pleasure uh, what goes on in this household. Uh, what goes on? My mistress, Sophie. Sophie. Oh, 
She's always very happy when she's going to leave for a ball. But is always very irritable while she's getting dressed for it. <laughs> you know, my dear, I personally can see no pleasure in going to a ball. Sophie usually returns home from balls at 6 a.m. And I can tell by her pale and emaciated features that the poor thing hasn't been given a bite to eat. <laughs> my confess, I could never live such a life. If I had to go without gaming sauce or chicken wing stew, I don't know what would become of me. The style is very jerky. You can see that it's not written by a man. She starts off all right, and then she lapses into dogginess. Well, let's see. Let's see another letter. Hmm. Ah, this one looks rather long. Hmm, no date. Oh, my dear. How strongly I feel the approach of spring. Oh, my heart beats as though I were waiting for something. In my ear, there's a constant bite. Very often I listen so intently behind doors that I raise my front paw. And confidentially, I have plenty of suitors. Oh, you should have seen the dashing young lover that came jumping over the fence into our courtyard. His name uh, is Treasure. Uh, treasure. And he has <laughs> such a nice face. Oh, damn it, oh, damn it, oh, what rubbish this is. How much of our letters are going to fill up with such stupid stuff? I, I, I'm after people, not dogs, not dogs. I need spiritual food and I'm served these inanities, inanities. Well, let's, let's skip a page. Uh, maybe we'll find something more interesting. Uh, Sophie was sitting at the table sewing something. Suddenly, the manservant came in and announced someone. Show him in, Sophie said. She hugged me hard and murmured, Oh, Madge, darling, if only you knew who that is. He's a guard officer. God. His hair is black, and his eyes are so dark and so light oh. at the same time, like fire. Yeah. And so they rushed out. A minute later, a young officer yeah. with black side whiskers appeared. Yeah. He went to the mirror and smoothed his hair. Then mm. he looked around the room. I growled That's a little good, good, good. and settled down by my window. Soon... Sophie came back, greeted him gaily, mm. while I pretended to be busy looking out of the window. In fact, however, I turned my head sideways a little so that I could catch uh, what they said. What they say? what they you say? cannot imagine, Fidel, dear, the silliness <laughs> of that conversation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I said to myself, this officer doesn't compare to treasure. <laughs> Ever, <laughs> what a difference really a tremendous difference. I wonder what she finds in her officer. I wonder what she finds. What on earth can she admire in him? Yes, here I tend to agree. Something seems wrong. It is quite unbelievable that this officer, this officer should have swept her off her feet. Well, let's see, let's see here. If she likes the officer, I think she'll soon be liking the civil service clerk ah. who sits in Papa's study. That one, my dear, is a real scarecrow. Scarecrow. He looks a bit like a turtle huh? caught in a bag. Uh, which clock can that be? Which clock can that be? He has a funny name, and he's always sitting sharpening oh. quills. The air on his head is like straw. Straw. Papa sends him on errands like a servant. Ah, oh, that filthy little car seems to be trying to get even. Why is my hair like straw? Sophie can hardly control her laughter oh. when she sees you. Oh, you wretched, lying little dog. What a filthy, poisonous tongue. As if I didn't know, it's all your jealousy, your jealousy. I know whose tricks these are, too. I recognize the hand of our divisional chief here. For some reason, that man has sworn undying hatred for me. He's trying to harm me. Yes, he is. He's trying to harm me. Harm me every bit of the day and night. Oh, still, let's see. One more letter. It may, it may make it clear. My dear Fidel, forgive me for not writing to you all this time. I've been going around in absolute ecstasy. I agree without reservation with the philosopher who said that love is a second life. Moreover, a lot of things are changing in our household. The officer comes here every day now. Sophie is madly in love with you. Madly in love with you. Papa is very gay. I even heard uh, Gregory say 
The wedding, the wedding is close at hand. Close at hand. Because Papa always wanted to see Sophie married to an eye of the to an army officer, an army officer with officer. a brilliant career ahead of you. No, 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 I can't go on. High official, senior officer, they get the best things in this world. You, you, you discover a crumb of happiness. You reach out for it, and, and then along comes a high official or an officer and snatches it away. Oh, damn it, damn it, damn it. I would so much like to become a high official myself. Not just to obtain a hand in marriage, either, no. Oh, I'd like to be a high official just so that I could watch them jump around on my benefit. I listen for a while to their courtly jokes and innuendos, and then I tell them what they could do with themselves. Oh, it hurts, though. It hurts. Oh, damn it, damn it, damn it. I tore those little dogs' lettuce to shreds. December 3rd. Impossible lies. There can't be a wedding. Well, he has a commission in the guards. So what? So what? Does he have a third eye in the middle of the spotted or a golden nose? Why am I a clock? Why am I a clock? Why should I be a clock? Maybe you only appear to be a clock. Maybe you're a general. Uh, maybe I don't really know who I am. You know, there are plenty of instances in history when somebody quite ordinary, not necessarily an aristocrat, some middle-class person, even a peasant, suddenly turns out to be a public figure. Maybe even the ruler of a country? Yes. Now, if a peasant can turn into someone so important, where are the limits to the possibilities for a man of breeding? Ah. I can see myself entering a room in a general's uniform. Yes. An epaulette on my right shoulder, an epaulette on my left shoulder, a blue ribbon across my chest. Yes. <sighs> How that would be? Well, you can't be promoted to anything like that overnight. What I'd like to know is, why am I a clock? Yes, why are you a clock? Why precisely a clock? December 5th. I read all the papers this morning. Mm. Strange mm. things are happening in Spain. I don't understand it at all. They write that the throne has been vacated. Vacated? Yes, and that the ranking grandees are having difficulty in selecting an heir. Ah, an heir? It seems there's discontent. Sounds very strange to me. How can a throne be empty? They say that some Donya may exceed. Donya? It's absolutely impossible. Of course it's impossible. A Donya can't exceed to a throne. A king should sit on a throne. Of course, a king should sit on a throne. They say there is no king. Well, that's impossible. It's impossible that there should be no king. There must be a king. Well, he, he might be hidden away somewhere in anonymity. Ah, yes. It's even possible that he's around here, you know, being, yes. being forced to remain in hiding because of family reasons mm. or for fear of some neighboring country. France, of course, France. Forced to remain in hiding. Well, there may be other reasons. December 8th. I was on the point of going to the office, but various considerations held me back. I couldn't get those Spanish affairs out of my head. How can a Donya possibly become a ruler? They won't allow it. Of course they won't allow it. In the first place, England won't stand for it. And then they must remember the political situation of the rest of Europe, the Austrian Empire. Our czar, our of czar. course, our czar. I must admit, I was so worried and hurt by these events, I couldn't do anything all day long. After dinner, I walked the streets. Uphill. Hmm. Downhill. Came across nothing of interest. Then mostly lay on my bed and thought about the Spanish question. Year 2000, April 43. This is a day of great jubilation. Spain has a king. They found him? I am the king. Oh, no. I discovered it today. It all came to me in a flash. Well, it's incredible <laughs> ever to have imagined being a civil service oh, clerk. Oh, such a crazy idea ever have entered my head. You would thank God no one thought of slapping you into a lunatic oh, asylum. Really? Well, well, now I see everything clearly. But what was happening before? Things, things loomed at me out of the fog. But now... Oh, wouldn't you say that all troubles stem from the misconception that human brains are located in the head? Yes. <laughs> well, they're not. The human oh. brains are blown in by the winds from somewhere around the Caspian Sea. Oh! Oh! Give away! Give away your man! Martha was the you first are... to whom I revealed my identity. Oh, when she heard I was the King of Spain, she flung up her hands, almost died in terror. Silly woman, she'd never oh. seen a King of Spain before. Oh, carve yourself, Martha, carve yourself. I can assure you of my royal favor. Mm. Oh, come now, bygones are bygones. The masses are so ignorant. True, true. She's probably frightened because she thinks that all kings of Spain are like Philip II. Martha, Martha, I'm not at all like Philip II. Oh, the hell with it. Right, the hell with it. The hell. 
I didn't go to the office. I'll never go there again. I'll never again copy those dreadful documents. October 86. Between day and night. Uh, you take it. Today the divisional chief sent someone to make you go to the office. Yes. You went... Well, just for the last. The divisional chief expected you to come apologizing to him for not being there for three weeks? Yes. Did you apologize? I did not. Uh, I looked at him with indifference. And what did you think as you sat in your usual place and looked around at all these scribbling rabbits? <laughs> oh, 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 I thought that if only they knew who was sitting there among them. What a fuss they make. Uh, they gave you some papers to abstract. Did you do the work? I didn't even stir. And when the director came in, what did the rest do? <laughs> They jumped up. They jumped up trying to be noticed. Did you jump up? <laughs> never, never. Who says I should get up for him? He's an old cork. Just a cork, the kind they used to stop up a bottle. That's all he is. But the funniest thing of all... Oh, <laughs> when they gave me a paper to sign. Yeah. Do, do, do you know where they expected me to sign it? In the corner. And the clerk, <laughs> such and such. Yes, imagine. <laughs> what did you do? I signed it. Uh, in the space reserved for the director. The director. <laughs> the very one. The very one. <laughs> what, what name did you sign? I signed. <laughs> Ferdinand the Ace. You did <laughs> Ah, yes, I did. Uh, and what, what happened? All silent. But I merely waved my hand and said graciously, the dispense with the manifestation of allegiance, and walked out of the room. And what did you do then? I went straight to the director's house. Was he at home? No, he wasn't. <laughs> and you then proceeded straight to her boudoir? Oh, she was sitting in front of her mirror. And when she saw me... <laughs> Did you tell her that you were the King of Spain? Certainly not. I simply told her, Madam, you cannot imagine the happiness awaiting you. And despite all our enemies' intrigue, we will soon be together. Get out, you idiot! Women are such perfidious things, really. Oh, never really understand them. Never really understand them. Who is woman really in love with? The devil, of course. Yes. Of course. You can see it. Just look over there. Do you see uh, in the frontier of the Moxes? Uh, she's raising her lawn yet. Yes. She's looking at the fat man over there with the star. No, she isn't. Nothing of the sort. She's staring at the devil. Yeah, where? There, hiding behind the fat oh. man's back. Look, he's hidden himself in the star. Yes, uh, and he's beckoning to her with his finger. She'll marry him, too. Of course she will. Mm. As for the rest of them, bootlickers. Mm. You know what they all really want? Annuities. <laughs> annuities. More annuities. You know, some patriots, they'd sell their mother and father and their god for money. The strutting betrayers of Christ. <laughs> And all this crazy <laughs> ambition, this vanity. You know where it comes from? <laughs> the little bubble under the tongue. Of course. <laughs> Tiny worm about the size of a pinhead in it. I think it's all the work of a barber on peace. Of course it is. I don't remember his name. You know who the moving force behind all that is? The Sultan of Turkey. Of course it is. I bet he pays the barber to spread Mohammedanism all over the world. Of course he does. They say that in France already. The majority of the people have embraced the Mohammedan faith. Of course they have. No date. A day without date. Went along Nevsky Avenue incognito. There's the Tsar riding past. Everyone's removing his hat. Well, I will too. I don't want to get the least sign that I'm the king of Spain. No, it would be undignified to reveal one's identity here in front of all these people. I think it would be more proper to be presented in court first. Yes. What's prevented me so far is the fact that I haven't yet got mm. a royal sanity high. You know, you should get hold of a royal mental of some sort. Well, I thought of having one made. You know, this is so stupid. They're not really interested in their trade nowadays. Actually, they go in for speculation. Most of them end up by mending roads. I know what I'll do. I'll make a medal out of my best coat. Oh, you better do it yourself. Oh, of course, I'll do it myself. I'll lock my door so that no one sees me. Now, now I'll have to cut this coat into ribbons with the scissors. Uh, uh, a mantle, after all, has a completely different style. A completely different style. Can't remember the day, nor the month. Damned if I know what's going on. Well, the mantle is ready. You're still not ready to be presented at court. No, why not? Your retinue hasn't yet arrived from Spain. Ah, that's right, my retinue. The absence of a retinue would be incompatible with my dignity. Yes. I'll wait. I'll wait. We should be here at any time. A first date. I'm puzzled by the unaccountable delay in the arrival of my retinue. What can be holding them up? I went to the post office to inquire whether the Spanish delegates had arrived. Oh, but the postmistress is an utter fool. No. There's uh, no Spanish delegates around here, but if you'd 
like to mail a letter. No, we'll be delighted no, to accept. Letter. Oh, what the devil is she talking about? What letter? What letter? Letter by foot. Let druggists write letters. February is the 13th, so I'm in Spain. It all happened so quickly that I hardly had time to realize it. Uh, this morning, the Spanish delegation arrived for me, and we all got into a carriage. Ah, it is bewildering how fast we went. We went so fast that within half an hour, we reached the Spanish border. When I entered the first room, I saw a multitude of people with shaven heads. A Dominican or Capuchin monks, no doubt. Uh, they always shave their heads. Come on! The manners of the king's chancellor leading me by the hand were certainly very strange. Now you sit quiet in here and don't call yourself King Ferdinand again or I'll beat the nonsense out of your head. Oh, come now, Chancellor, we're alone now. No, I, I know that I'm being tested yeah. and I refuse to submit to this uh, indignity any longer. All right, then I won't, uh, you! Uh, hey, no! Hey, oh, that, oh, that hurt terribly. But I didn't let out a cry. I contained myself. Remembering that it is customary procedure among knights on initiation into an exalted order. Uh, to this day, they adhere to the chivalric code in Spain. Stupid idiots! <sighs> Left to myself, I, I, I decided to devote some time to affairs of state. Tomorrow, as foreseen by the famous English chemist Wellington, the Earth will find the moon. Yes, I confess I'm deeply worried about that. Uh, particularly when you consider the moon's extraordinary sensitivity and fragility. Ah, yes. The moon, of course, is made in Hamburg. I must say they do a very poor job. I England doesn't do something about it. It's a lame Cooper that mm. makes the moon, and it's quite obvious that he has no conception no of what the moon should be. He uses tarred rope and olive oil. That's why the stench is so awful all over the earth. We are continually forced to plug our noses. And that's why the moon itself is such a delicate ball that men cannot live there. <laughs> Only knows it. Certainly. <laughs> That's why we can't see our own nose. Well, of course, they're all on the moon. <laughs> and when you think, when you think what a heavy thing the Earth is. That's right. When the Earth mounts the moon, all our noses will be crushed to a powder. Ah, what are we to do? Hurry, we better warn the Capuchin monks. Yes, of course. We must warn them immediately. Immediately. Hurry. Hurry. Gentlemen. Uh, gentlemen. Uh, 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 gentlemen, we must save the moon. Uh, the Earth is preparing to mount it. Oh, the, the Capuchin monks were admirable. Uh, they rushed at once to execute my royal wish. Uh, many of them tried to climb the wall to reach the moon in time. Uh, uh, but at that moment, the Grand Chancellor entered. Everyone scattered. Uh, I being the king. Uh, remain alone. January of the same year, which happened after Februarius. I still can't make out what sort of a place Spain is. The customs and the etiquette of the court are quite incredible. I don't see it. I don't grasp it's it. It's incomprehensible. They shaved my head. They shaved my head. Even though I shouted with all my might that I did not want to become a monk. They began to drip cold water on my head. I've never been through such torture. Who can understand the point of such peculiar ah, customs? Stupid, it's senseless. And the irresponsibility of the kings who never oh. got around to outlawing this custom, it's quite incomprehensible. I can't grasp it. There are indications that would make one wonder whether one hasn't fallen into the hands of the Inquisition. Inquisition? That Chancellor, for instance. <gasps> The Grand Inquisitor himself. Yes, but then how could the king be subjected to the Inquisition? Ah, true. Oh, true. Unless this is the work of some other country. Ah, France. Yes, that fellow Polignac. Polignac. That Polignac is an absolute beast. He, he swore to drive me to my death. Oh, there's no end to his maneuvers. Oh. And he is himself being led by the English. Of course, the English are great politicians. Ah, spread the seas of dissension everywhere. Everywhere. As the whole world knows when England takes snuff. <laughs> France sneezes. Oh, it sneezes. <laughs> All right, where are you now? That day, the Grand Inquisitor entered Come my on. room. I, I heard him approaching, and, uh, and I hid on the chair. Where are you, you idiot? <laughs> uh, I remained silent. 
He couldn't see me. Come on, out of there. Oh, it's a trick. It's a trick. Oh, no. Come on. They they won't get me that way. They'll pour water on my head again. Where are you? There you are. Uh, Spain uh, hiding uh, under a chair. uh, Come out of there. No. Go on, this will teach you. Oh, 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 he he beat me terribly. Uh, It's all right. He's gone. Come, come now. Think think of your latest Uh, discovery. Uh, that'll make you feel better. Which discovery? The one about roosters. Ah, oh, yes. Every rooster uh, has his, his own, own Spain. <laughs> That's right. Of course he has. But he hides it, he of hides it. Of course he does. He, 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 he hides it under his feathers. Of course, his feathers. <laughs> Thirty-four months. Year. 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 A war about. Three, four, nine. Nine. No. No, I have no strength left. I can't stand any more. Oh, oh God, what they're doing to me. They pour cold water on my head. They don't listen to me. They don't hear me. They don't see me. What have I done to them? Why do they torture me so? What do they want from me? What can I give them? I haven't anything to give. I have no strength. I cannot bear this suffering. My head is on fire, and everything goes round me in circles. Save me. Save me, save me. Take me away from here. Give me a carriage. Give me a carriage with horses swift as wind. Yes. Yes, drive on, coachman. Let the harness bells ring. Soar up, my horses. Carry me away from this world. Father, 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 where I will see nothing. Nothing, nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Ah, there's the sky smoking before me. A star. Twinkles far away. The forest rushes past me with its dark trees and the crescent moon. The violet bark is a carpet underneath me. Oh, I hear something through the fog. On the one side, the sea. On the other, Italy. Russian hut. Ah, Russian hut. Maybe that's my house over there, looking blue in the distance. Oh, and isn't that my mother sitting by the window? Yes. Mother. 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 Save your wretched son. Let your tears fall on his sick head. See how they torture him. Hold me. Hold me in your arms. There's no room for him in this world. They are chasing him, mother. Mother. By the way, <laughs> have you heard that the day of Algiers has a wart? <laughs> a wart? <laughs> right under his nose. <laughs> right under his nose. That was The Diary of a Madman by Nikolai Gogol. The 
technical production for this broadcast was by John Whiting. The music was designed by KPFA music director Charles Shear. Eric Bowersfeld played the madman, with Bernard Mays as the alter ego and several other men, and Pat Franklin played the several women in their lives. And now, good night. Thank you.